Hey everybody, long time no see, and I have some very exciting news for you. If you haven't already heard, there has been a new Gwent expansion actually announced, and it's coming out this very month, which uh, surprised me greatly. I thought we'd have to maybe wait until next month uh, to have all this stuff, but uh, dev stream, lots of new cards have been talked about, and of course the theme of the expansion overall, you can go check that out on CD Projekt Red's Twitch channel in the VODs if you want to, um, but long story short, as you probably already know, uh, the new expansion is all about a syndicate, uh, criminal underworld effectively, uh, that has joined together uh, with several sort of clans of criminals uh, making up the faction. I think lore-wise, thematically, it's a very, very cool faction and it's definitely a, a departure and a change from all the sort of, uh, you know, regular armies and whatnot and the devs did say they wanted to do something different, and this is, seems like a cool direction to go, but I wanted to talk about the cards that were shown, give some impressions on the new mechanics that have been shown as well, and what I think about them. Uh, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, cautiously optimistic. I have some reservations, maybe, about the, uh, the faction, uh, but I want to give my thoughts and impressions on all that stuff, so let's jump into it. So, we got quite a few new keywords. I'll try to go through them all here. So, firstly, the new faction is using a new mechanic called the... Cr called crowns, which effectively is money, uh, and you have certain cards that will give you money. These have the keyword of profit, they will give you money into your bank. Uh, other cards will allow you to spend the money, there will be keywords such as fee, which allow you to effectively like an order effect with zeal on it. They allow you to spend the money if they have the fee ability, uh, and then they'll give you some kind of positive effect from spending your money. And there are other cards that have the word tribute on them, and that is kind of like a deploy effect where you can opt into spending the money that you have, uh, or the money that re it requires of you, and that will then trigger a special ability. So there's kind of an order and a deploy way to spend the money that you gain from profit, which is another keyword. There are also quite a few other keywords. There is intimidation, uh, which means you are boosting the unit. It's kind of like harmony or thrive. It boosts by one every time you play a crime card, and these are special uh, crime cards, like a tactic. Uh, for Nilfgaard, but instead it's a crime for the Syndicate faction, so that's another keyword. There is also Insanity, which I think is probably one of the coolest ones, to be honest. It fits really well with the, uh, this idea of this kind of clown gang, uh, which, you know, you experience in The Witcher 3, and it's, yeah, pretty... <laughs> I like the clowns, they're pretty, pretty damn badass, but, um, uh, that's... Uh, insanity, what is it doing? Well, instead of spending your money, uh, if you don't have money, you can instead you know, uh, damage the unit by the amount that you would be spending of your crowns, so effectively allowing you to proc or use the ability without actually spending money if you don't have it. So uh, it gives you kind of a get out of jail free card. Uh, I like the, the theme there, they're kind of so crazy that they just don't even, they don't even need the money, they're willing to just self harm or whatever. Anyway, uh, so that's what's going on. There's also kind of this aspect to do with poison and poisoning your own units, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we'll get onto all of these cards. There's also another one which is called Bounty, uh, and what Bounty is is you put it on a unit uh, in the same way you'd put poison or a shield or something on a unit, and if you destroy the unit that has bounty on it, you gain coins, you gain crowns equal to the amount of base strength that unit has, I believe. So uh, that seems pretty cool, and I don't think I've missed anything apart from Horde. Horde, uh, that's the last keyword of the new mechanics, and what Horde means is you need to get a certain amount of crowns in your bank, uh, you need to have stored a certain amount of money, and then you're gaining an effect. Uh, for example, in this card, it's boosting by three instead of by two if you have a lot of money in your bank. So uh, I'm pretty sure I haven't missed anything there. Uh, and we'll just jump into talking about all these cards. Yeah, I think I've got everything. So those are all the new keywords. I got to say, thematically, they're all, all pretty impressive. Um, and they do fit the, the theme very nicely. And yeah, basically, I'm going to be a little bit interested to see how kind of powerful this faction is, where it really fits into the power rankings of all the other factions and whatnot, and I want to jump into the cards that have been shown so far and give some impressions on the direction this faction seems to be going in and what that might mean. Uh, also, it was announced there will be dual faction cards, which I'll talk about here. Uh, I think a few of them were shown on the stream, and those are cards that are both shared between the new faction and also other factions, you know, Skelliger Monsters, Northgard, Northern Realms, Skotel. So, that's a really cool concept, actually. Uh, I do think it might be quite hard for them to make it so these kind of cards are possible to play in both this new faction and old factions, because of course in the other factions you have uh, lots of synergies and archetypes going on that probably aren't shared with the new faction, so for those cards to be good, uh, you'd probably have to make them very strong just 
base value effectively and and that might be kind of overpowered if they're doing that so um either those dual faction cards would probably be very very good in both factions or not good at all it, uh or not good for one of the factions i should say um and only good for one of them uh that's what i would imagine if they're good at all but okay with that being said let's jump into the individual cards uh these are all yes yeah, syndicate cards the new faction so pretty exciting stuff so what is this one uh, i don't actually have the names of the cards here unfortunately but this is a bronze card, 4 for 4, uh, with the deploy effect of give an allied unit poison and boost it by 2. Uh, I've got to say, I really like the theme of sort of poisoning your own guys, sort of drugs and uh, and all sorts of bad stuff going on um, and causing harm to the, the population, but also you're getting something out of it because you're criminals, you know, so um, that's pretty good stuff. And it's a 6 of 4, which obviously is very, very good on a uh, full provision card. It's good for a bronze card, right? Uh, you know, you're looking at stuff in Skelliger that's 6 or 4, and there's a bit of a condition associated with it. Here, there's not much of a condition. The poison is a downside, um, but not many people are playing poison right now, so, you know, you might see this being quite good. Uh, of course, it gets countered pretty hard if ever people are deciding to run poison effects. So, you can see this being, you know, pretty damn strong as a bronze, or kind of not played at all if poison becomes meta, which... You know, depending on what happens with Syndicate, whether there are lots of poison giving cards, maybe there will be, that could influence whether poison in your own units would be really bad. Right now, it's not the end of the world if you poison your own guys, but it's definitely not a good thing. Um, so we'll have to see exactly how good that ends up being. And likewise, um, I guess I'll skip on to uh, this guy who's an addict of some kind, 4 for 4, uh, who, if, is, if he is poisoned, he gets boosted at the end of the turn by 1. So... Obviously a bit of a, a synergy that you're meant to go with here. You play this 4.44 uh, engine, uh, you give him poison, you boost him up, and then he starts rolling. I'm not sure exactly how good that will be. One thing to note is you're boosting this guy by 2 already with the uh, with the guy that gives 2 and, and gives poison. So he's going to jump into tool removal very quickly, and at the moment that's a bit of a problem. You know, if you play an engine in round 1 and then get geralted on blue coin, you're kind of screwed. So... We'll see how good that is. I imagine this will be a bit too difficult to set up. I would, I imagine this guy probably won't be played unless there's a lot more, you know, giving your friendly unit poison kind of cards introduced. And maybe there will be. Uh, it seems like that's an archetype they're trying to, to go towards. Um, if that is the case, then this might be okay. Otherwise, I don't see this one being played. Maybe the other, uh, the other guy will be, though. This is a bit more kind of standalone value, pretty easy to get, uh, you know, stuff from. You know, four for four with potential for engine value isn't bad either though, so I could be wrong about that. That may very well be a decent card. Anyway, let's jump into the next kind of stuff going on. So next up we have a 3 for 4, uh, and this is synergizing with spawning units. Uh, it seems like there are going to be cards that spawn, uh, yeah, spawning units, kind of a swarm style of archetype. And this guy gets boosted every time you spawn a unit. Um, is that good? Well, it has potential. I think at 3 strength, it's probably a bit too vulnerable to really be very good. Uh, it might be good in the sense that maybe an Elven Swordmaster is good in Squirtel. Occasionally you'll play or run a, run against it, right? I don't imagine this card will be mainstream just because it's a bit easy to disrupt. Yes, it can go crazy if you're able to spawn a lot of things in the same turn. You can get a ton of value from it, but really, if you're doing that, then you're maybe using your kind of powerful swarming tools in, a, in either an early round where you want to play your bronzes or you have to play a low provision bronze in round three which you don't want to do so it's kind of a bit of a an anti-synergy going on there like this guy is good when you play like swarmy finisher style of like going crazy with swarming cards you probably don't want to play it in the same round because it's a low provision card and you want to typically mulligan away the bronzes for round three and whatnot so i just think this one will be kind of bad but i guess i could be wrong about that uh next up we have big burly dwarf man uh, with Intimidate, and he's a 4 for 4, so this is kind of the Necker Warrior, the uh, Dryad Fledgling or whatever uh, of this faction, and it seems, and it has Intimidate, which obviously boosts by 1 every time you play a Crime card. Now, how many Crime cards are there? I don't know. There probably will be quite a few. Um, will it be a good keyword? I'm not sure if Intimidate will be. Uh, I think it probably won't be great apart from... The weird thing is, it incentivizes playing a lot of spells, right? Uh, a lot of non-units, and uh, that can be definitely good in the sense that if you don't play units, you're dodging removal and stuff, so 
a no unit style of deck with a lot of crime or a lot of spell cards might be good but then you're forced to play these you're not forced to but if you want to run intimidate uh, you are playing units so that kind of runs contrary to a no unit style of uh, deck that you might otherwise want to run if you're running a lot of spells so really kind of hard to judge i think this keyword will be kind of not very good compared to the other ones that we have like harmony and thrive it's just the ceiling is not very high on it the amount of spells you can play and probably want to play i don't imagine will be that high uh, there are a couple of other spells here which we'll talk about which i don't think are particularly good but some of them are um and yeah we'll we'll see but a little bit a little bit uh, skeptical on intimidate i don't think it'll be too great uh but you know we'll see about that in terms of strength anyway i like the the theme of it it's definitely very exciting all right i just had to get a drink of water because my throat was dying Okay, let's jump onto the next card. This is another Intimidate card. It has five strength, ten provisions. Uh, gives you three crowns when you play it. Um, and I think crowns are equivalent to about one point, it seems like, uh, usually, judging from some of the other bronzes we have here. So, basically an eighth or ten when you play it with Intimidate, which, as I've said, I don't think is going to be a particularly strong keyword from the looks of it. Um, but it also has the ability to spend five crowns and gain resilience. How good is that? Mm, effectively, you pay five points to gain five carryover. Um, so, you know, that's that's maybe a strong ability um, if you have the money for it. And if you don't want to spend it on other things, you don't need the points. Uh, you know, maybe you have some carryover. That's worth noting. Crowns are actually carrying over um, half of your crowns uh, every round. So that's pretty important. So maybe you have some crowns carried over from round one. And then you play this guy, you, uh, you know, spend the money that you have from last round as well as the profit money, and then he gains resilience, and you can keep all of your coins for round three, effectively, all your points. Um, and, yeah, the way I look at this is kind of like a Gabor, right? Gabor is nine provisions, five strength as well. He also kind of has Intimidate in that he gets boosted when you play a Dwarf. Um, so they're pretty similar. Uh, I guess the one thing is this, this card is worth eight points when it comes down because of that profit. Um, Gabble's only worth five, so um, yes, Gabble's less provisions. This guy's more. He is more points, though. Um, he doesn't gain the immediate resilience or immunity, so that's the downside. I would say Gabble's probably a little bit better of a card. Will this be good? Mm, I don't know if it'll be played. Maybe it will be, but I don't see it being amazing. Should we put it that way? I don't see it being an amazing card. Okay, next up we've got a three for five. Uh, this guy also has Intimidate and a deploy effective damage in enemy unit by two. So another kind of engine. And to be fair, these engines are costed quite nicely. You know, this is like a Wyvern kind of, right? Um, so got that effect. But as I said, I don't think Intimidate will be as strong as Thrive. Thrive is, you can effectively proc Thrive on every card you play. Intimidate, you're going to be required to play, you know, a lot of a lot of specials. And maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe it doesn't work for the deck. Maybe it does. Um... I'm a little bit skeptical that Intimidate will be good, as I said, but um, if it is, then, you know, a 5 for 5, which is then engine value as well, is probably quite good. And maybe you even consider throwing these kind of cards in if you know you're playing a few crime cards here and there. You know, maybe play 4, 6 crime cards, and then, you know, you play a few of these well-costed Intimidate cards that also are giving you a bit of removal value. I could see that working. I could see that working. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see how many crime cards there are and how good they are in terms of the points they generate but okay next up we have this guy he is a three for five and a deploy effect of boost adjacent units by one so effectively a five for five now if you pay four crowns you actually boost all allies on the road instead of just the adjacent units so what does that mean well effectively it can be a five for five or it can be a we have eight units on a row right so it could be an 11 for five um, now, bear in mind you're paying 4, so it's more like a 9 for f uh, 11 for 9, which is very good. The question is, how often will you get a fully stacked row? Um, if you're able to pull that off a lot of the time, if Lacerate isn't a thing that punishes you all the time for doing that, then this kind of effect can be very, very powerful, and maybe you even build your deck around it. You're able to basically be playing like massive bombs uh, in your bronze core, uh, which is something that not many decks can do, and it's probably quite strong, especially if you want to push you know, uh, whatever round. But yeah, we'll see uh, how easy it is to punish the row stacking effectively and how easy it is to actually row stack in the first place. Will you be able to swarm a whole row? Is there any card that is like fill up a row and then you can just slam these guys or 
Is it going to be a bit slower and harder to achieve that? If it is hard to set up a full row, then I don't see this ever being good, because obviously you need the the real value from it. Otherwise, it's a 5 for 5. I mean, 5 for 5 is not terrible. Maybe you even play that sometimes. Um, but if you're having to play just vanilla 5 for 5s, then maybe, uh, maybe not going to be that great. But I, I think this card will be good. My anticipation is this card will be quite good. You know, 5 for 5 with an upside that can potentially be very good, so... Uh, we've talked about him. This guy is a 4 for 4 with Fee 2 boost self by 2 and Horde 7 boost by 3 instead. So what this means is effectively you can turn your coins into one point for every coin you have. If you have 7 or more coins in the bank, um, you're at a max of 9, I believe. If you have 7 or more, you're turning your coins into 1.5 points. Uh, so it's a 4 for 4. I don't know if this is good. Maybe if you don't have any other options, you would play it, but uh, it just seems a bit weak. Like, even if you have a lot of coins stored up, probably it's kind of later on, uh, you know, that, that that would happen, right? Uh, in a round, in a game, whatever. Maybe you're saving up all your coins for that round three big bomb play or whatever. Um, you are wanting to drop these kind of 4P cards in early earlier in the game, right? So... I'm just not sure I see this being really worthwhile. Effectively, the best you can get for it is six points. Um, and the utility of being able to spend your money. But I don't know how important that will be. There seem to be quite a few cards that will allow you to spend money. Um, so, yeah, I don't think this one will be particularly good. It's a bit too conditional, I imagine. But we'll see. Maybe it's very easy to get up to seven and beyond coins. And you can quite easily then transfer that uh, into this guy. I have a feeling the spending of crowns will be more valuable on kind of other cards, you know, big gold cards and whatnot, rather than this kind of weak bronze, but we'll see about that. Next one is a crime card. This is a special and uh, five provisions. Profit three, damage an enemy unit by three. Pretty straightforward. Uh, probably out of the specials, I think, here is the strongest, I think. It's damaging by three, which is obviously a pretty good amount of damage. You can kill a lot of engines with that. And you get pr three profits, so effectively a six or five uh, more if you're counting the synergy that profit can give you with other things. So I think of the specials shown here, this seems to be the most viable or the most powerful. Uh, will it be played? I mean, yeah, quite possibly. Um, and these kind of style of cards is definitely going to incentivize no units to be played. That's the one thing I'm picking up on. If you're able to just pack a deck full of profit uh, and damage, and not many units, then you could probably just stall and make all your opponent's cards dead. Uh, personally, I'm a little bit worried that that will be the case, and then we'll be in a meta of just no unit nonsense um, once this faction comes out, but, uh, you know, we'll see if that's actually what happens. Either way, probably a decent card, and if you're going to be running Intimidate, uh, Intimidation cards, then you should probably throw this one in, I guess. Uh, we'll see, maybe this isn't even the best of... Uh, of the crime cards, it's possible there are ones that are even better costed than this, but this seems pretty fair and pretty strong for a special, which are usually, especially when they're removing things, they're usually kind of underwhelming in terms of the points they generate. Okay, next up we have this guy. I believe this guy's a dual faction with Skellige cards. So this guy is in Skellige as well as the new faction, and he prevents the unit to the left uh, from taking any damage. Uh, so kind of like an Avalak in a way, gives a bit of kind of quasi immunity of course, you can still lock the unit that this guy's kind of protecting. Um, you can't really in, in, uh, you can't really move him and negate the effect like you can with Avalak. So, kind of similar to Avalak, although it has some other uses. Of course, you can play this in Skellige, so you may be putting it next to your priest that's hitting something, right? Uh, defending that thing from taking damage. I'm pretty sure this won't work if you like put it next to Olaf and then go Canute onto Olaf. Because uh, it pre prevents the thing taking damage. So Olaf won't even take damage. He won't then be able to be boosted. Knut won't do damage. So I'm not sure there are that many combos that work very well with this right now in the game. And I'm not sure you can justify very easily a 6 for 10. Maybe if you're playing kind of an engine heavy. Uh, and, you know, Skellige often is pretty engine heavy. Maybe you can justify protecting your cards. Uh, it doesn't protect from tall removal. So, you know, maybe you want to... Uh, protect your big priest or whatever from, from damage, okay, but it's still going to get hit by Geralt, so that's not really too useful. I don't know, the one thing that is good about this is he's very hard to deal with, you can't muzzle him, you can't uh, damage him to death really, there's not much that deals 6 damage, so he's kind of just chunky, uh, harder to kill than Avalak, and can probably protect an engine for a turn or two, so, you know, we'll see, maybe that is actually valuable in some sense. I'm leaning towards, I don't think this card will be very good, um, generally, but, you know, could be surprising. Okay, next up we have this lad. 
Uh, he's a 4 for 10, and profit for Fee to spawn a Fire Sworn Zealot and summon his, this, him to this row. I'm not sure it's been announced, but I think I'm probably fine in saying that the, the Zealots are too strength. They probably told that on the stream, to be honest, but I can't remember if they did. But they're too strength, guys, so what does that mean? Well, effectively, you can turn, again, uh, your crowns into one point for every crown you have. Uh, but you are spawning a unit, you're swarming, so obviously there's synergy with the card I showed before that boosts every time you spawn a unit. And more than that, you can also fill up your row and maybe boost it with the other guy that we talked about. So that's kind of the obvious synergy that's going to work with those kind of cards. So you want to swarm the board, boost the board, boost the units that care about swarming, do all that good stuff. Profit 4, so it's effectively an 8 for 10, which isn't too bad, but then it's allowing you to snowball and swarm quite a lot. Uh, I don't know. It does require some kind of synergy, and obviously we've seen some of that. There probably needs to be more going on for this card to be good, but uh, yeah, it has potential. It has potential to be strong. Um, again, you know, it's going to be vulnerable to things like Lacerate and Row Punishment, but if that's not meta, and if this isn't meta, uh, and people don't react with Lacerates and whatnot, then maybe this, is, this kind of card is strong. You can just spam the board down and maybe uh, do things like Bone Talisman or whatever and just swarm really hard. Um, but we'll see. Looks okay, looks pretty strong. This card is a 3 for 5 with 2 profits, so effectively a 5 for 5, and you can translate the money again uh, into points, either bleeding or if you have a unit that has a bounty on it, it just damages immediately instead. Nothing too special here, seems like a pretty much a 5 for 5 card, I don't know how good that is exactly. Uh, it does a bit of damage, so, you know, it's kind of similar to things like... Uh, the Officer or whatever in Square Tail, or the Dolbathana Archer. Just a decent bronze, I guess. You would maybe throw this in, especially if things like Neckers are popular. Then again, this doesn't really answer Neckers because the bleeding doesn't actually do damage immediately, so... Uh, maybe it's not that great. It's probably going to be a bit of a weaker... Uh, yeah, weaker Archer or Officer or whatever the comparison is. Although, you do get that profit, and of course you don't have to spend that on his ability. You can save that to do other things, so maybe that'll be important in some way. You can use them as a little bit of carryover or for one point next round, which is kind of cute. And, you know, that'll apply to most of the profit cards, of course, which might make them stronger than they would initially seem. I had another drink of water. My throat is dying, but okay. Um, next guy, we've got a 5 for 8, profit 3, so... Okay, 8 for 8, that seems pretty fair. And a fee 3, place a bounty on an enemy unit. How good will bounty be? Well... I can actually see this being one of the main ways that you can probably generate crowns and feel pretty good about it. If you put a bounty on a tall unit, for example, you know, maybe like a spear tip or whatever else, uh, and then throw down a Geralt, that could be really strong. Although, at the moment, there's not really too much in the meta that's that's playing those tall units. I guess Skelliger does sometimes, and monsters. If you're able to hit, like, really high base strength units with a bounty, and then take the bounty with a Geralt or whatever, then that could be really, really powerful. Uh, otherwise, you know, bounty could be okay as well on just regular units. I think it's kind of hard to kind of hard to judge because you have to pl make the play, then do the setup and all this stuff, and it's going to take you a few turns to really reap the reward uh, on on the bounty and on the, the crowns and stuff that you get. And of course, that's going to mean you're very vulnerable to being bled. Uh, you're going to be very vulnerable to the, the enemy passing and kind of making you play more cards than you'd maybe want to uh, in round one or round two or whatever. So. Uh, I th it's going to take a lot of steps to really uh, get, you know, to a place, you know, you put the bounty on the enemy unit, then you kill the enemy unit, then you get the crowns, and then you play a card that spends the crowns. That's three plays to really profit on the on the stuff that you're doing. So, um, hard to say whether that kind of, you know, requirement of setup and stuff will actually be viable. I don't know, this guy seems fair though, 8 for 8, minimum effectively, and maybe getting that bounty off is going to be very valuable to you, so... I can see this one being good. Maybe not amazing, but I can see it being played. Uh, next up, we've got this guy. He's a 4 strength for 9, and he damages an enemy unit by 4 on deploy. Um, so, a return to the old ways of 8 uh, for 9 damaging cards, it seems, which uh, seems alright. Seems very strong. Uh, but he also has Tribute 6 of Destroy a Target instead. What does that mean? Well, you can pay effectively 6 points, so he'd become a 2 point card uh, for 9. And effectively, you then have to be killing a 7 or more uh, unit to be getting the value there. So, or, you know, a unit that's generating 7 or more value. So that ability can be potentially very strong. I think I've done the maths right there. 
um, you basically yeah play, pay him as a play him as a two instead of an eight, but then you can destroy a unit instead of deal with the damage. So yeah, could be uh, could be very strong this guy. He's probably going to be one of the main payoff things for the crowns. I imagine being able to destroy anything is going to be quite good, especially if big units are around. But there's also that flexibility. You don't have to destroy something big if you don't want to, and I think that will. You know, he's just a good card in, in terms of not even having the tribute. This is a return to the old ways of being able to deal four damage very cheaply, which has always been very good with Regis and Ifrit and whatnot. So I don't see this card being bad. This will be good, I think, um, for sure. The question is how good, and it might be very, very good. Um, we'll see. Next one is Profit 6-6. Six, six. Crime card, pretty straightforward. Just a way to get money in the bank. It's a zero-point play. Um, so again, vulnerable to bleeding, and I think that's maybe going to be the theme of this faction. It's going to be very vulnerable to being bled, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's going to be kind of carryover heavy, uh, vulnerable to bleeding. In fact, I kind of like that idea. Uh, I think a lot of the most interesting, you know, situations that happen in Gwent are when you're uh, vulnerable to being bled or you need to bleed the opponent, uh, and you've got to make those difficult decisions on what card to play and how far to push and whatnot. I think that opens up really good gameplay options. The one thing I'm a little bit concerned about is whether or not this will be too easily bleedable, and as a result, maybe the faction will be quite weak. There's a chance um, that, you know, you just win round one against it and then push a little bit. You're never worrying about losing a card to them in round two because they have to play profit play, which is effectively zero points. Uh, and it maybe makes bleeding very easy against them, maybe makes the deck very predictable to, you know, the faction very predictable to beat and play against. We'll have to wait and see on that. Um, you know, of course, you're getting six in the bank, that can be then, uh, that can stay as carryover, you know, three points to the next round, which is not bad at all. Um, and definitely, if you're able to kind of get into the round two on ten cards, play three profit cards or three carryover cards with the faction, you're going to be in a great spot. The thing is, I think, yeah, it's going to be very easy to bleed, so playing that, that carryover is probably not going to be too possible most of the time. Um, yeah, we'll see how that, that kind of interaction goes, but sure. Six for six, that seems whatever. Fair, other than, of course, the fact that it might be bleedable. It is carryover, though, so that kind of counteracts that or bounces out, I suppose. Next up, we have Beggar. This is kind of like the Plumard or the Enchantress of uh, Crimson Curse, uh, but instead, yeah, for the new expansion. And it is a 3 for 4 with Profit 2 and Bonded Profit 4 instead. So effectively a 5 for 4. And if you have another one on the board, it's a 7 for 4. Same as Plumard, same as Enchantress. And I think Plumard saw a fair amount of play. It's not a terrible card. Um, this might also see a similar amount of play, uh, I would imagine. It's just kind of working the same way. Enchantress also, you know, not bad uh, for a bronze, although it doesn't really work in the way that you want your other cards in Northern Realms to work, which is why it isn't so much played because it's not like a typical engine that does damage and synergize with the other stuff, but I can definitely see this being a card that you play in a sort of money generating deck. Um, it seems like a decent way to get a bit of carryover, yeah, carryover and uh, a bit of value for later. Nothing too crazy. Okay, then we have Eavesdrop. Um, five provisions, crime, profit, profit four, and draw a card, then put a card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. So effectively a 4 for 5, you can compare this to Vico Varo Novice in Nilfgaard, it's basically the same thing, although a little bit better, uh, and it doesn't put a body on the board, which is definitely a, an upside. I would imagine this card will probably not see play in regular kind of Syndicate decks. I imagine it will see play if people are playing no unit Syndicate decks, and probably if people play Shoop uh, in, those, in the Syndicate as well. Uh, it's the kind of card you can put in Shoop, you know, just whatever, 4 for 5, filler helps fix your hand if you're playing Shoop and you have bad cards in it. Uh, not a particularly amazing card and probably not good in standard decks I would imagine, but yeah, sure. Uh, in, in some special cases will maybe be played. Uh, this is seemingly the thinning card for the faction. Uh, compare it to Imperial Brigade or Volunteers or whatever. Six provisions, four strength, insanity, which means you can damage it instead of paying the fee cost, and the fee is two, to summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. So. Effectively, the thinning for the faction might be close to auto include. You've got a 6 for 12, effectively, uh, with one thinning, which is, you know, it's fairly costed. When you look at volunteers, you're getting 6 for 10, which is obviously better, but it's more conditional. Um, and, you know, you can spend the money instead of uh, losing the, uh, you know, the, the points. So you can get an 8, effectively. A bit more tempo if you're valuing the tempo and, uh, you know, want to transfer your crowns into 
into points, but I don't think that'll be really an issue. So really, this is just like an Imperial Brigade. Imperial Brigade is pretty well, you know, pretty common. It's played in a lot of decks. Um, this guy's a little bit less vulnerable to Gimpy, which I guess is a, a thing. Um, and yeah, seems just like a good card. Will probably be played in a fair amount of decks, if not all of the non-no-unit uh, Syndicate decks. Okay, next up we have a 4 Provision Crime card. Profits 3 and then you lose all your crowns and damage an enemy by the same amount. Uh, I don't see this one being very good. It just seems, uh, firstly you're getting 3 for 4, which mm, not great. And then you're forced, it seems, to lose all of your crowns and damage an enemy by the same amount. So that might just be a bit awkward if you have, uh, I mean obviously you can play around it and, and uh, you know, if it's in your hand you can work around that. Um, but you know, it, it's kind of whatever, forcing you to use the crowns and deal damage, um, you don't get to save anything for later is, is, the, is the main thing, so if you're playing for carryover you're not able to do that with this card. Maybe you'll see play in no unit decks again, if there's like a ton of crime cards then I think no unit decks will just be inevitable really with this faction, but um, that's kind of the only place I see it being played. Uh, I mean, you can deal some pretty big damage with it, but really is damage that valuable? We've got things like Alza's Thunder, which are barely ever played, um, which do similar things to this. I don't see it happening personally, but yeah. And lastly, we have a Monsters Dual Faction card. I might have missed some of the other Dual Faction cards, but whatever. Uh, they're not clearly, uh, you know, stated as such. Uh, but this one is shared with Monsters, and it destroys an allied unit and boosts self by its base power. Uh, it's an 8 for 6. So kind of like a consume, but um, with base power instead of current power. So what does that mean? Um, well, usually the current power is higher than base. Um, so kind of like a weaker consume. I'm looking at this like a uh, like a bad Bures effectively is what it seems like. Although I do believe it... I heard someone say it gives you crowns based on half the base power or something? I don't know exactly how it's working. Honestly, this card's a bit of a confusion to me. Uh, I don't quite understand what's going on with it. It seems kind of bad. It just seems like a bad consume effect uh, on a six, you know, but uh, I could be wrong about that. I'm probably misinterpreting or misunderstanding something here or something's missing. Um, yeah, maybe my brain's doing an oopsie or whatever, but uh, yeah, looking at it, it doesn't seem particularly good. It seems pretty uh, mediocre. But yeah, <laughs> so that's pretty much all the cards uh, and just some thoughts on them. I think there's some really cool themes and stuff going on for this expansion. As, as I said, I'm kind of amazed that uh, it's coming out so soon at the end of the month on 28th. So that's pretty exciting. I'll probably try to cover more cards as they come out for you guys. Uh, hopefully that'll be enjoyable. And uh, yeah, it'll be very fun to experiment and stuff with, with this new faction once it comes out. Let me know. What you think of all the uh, the new faction, the new leaders and such, I didn't talk about them here, but I'm sure we'll find out later what's going on with them. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys, subscribe for more videos if I get around to making them that is, and I'll see you next time.